Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on the video. Before this video begins, I just want to do a quick shout out. Shout out to Eric. Shout out to Wilson Co. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And shout out to Greg Hill. Stay tuned to find out how you can win next video. Shout out. My prawn shrimp in here that pretty much lost all his limbs and his whiskers. Check him out. He got all his limbs back. About to go pick up a big pleco. He loves to just stand on the ground like this on his hind legs. Hey, what's going on YouTube? So just real quick, so I'm making a video right now because I'm about to go pick up a big pleco from somebody off of uh, Craigslist. So I went on Craigslist and for the longest time I was looking for somebody that was giving away a fish that needed to be rehomed to a better home. I saw someone post an ad that said that they had a big pleco and they were trying to get rid of it. So I told them that I would go and take it. Now I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are probably saying, dude, your 125 gallon tank, it's already overstocked. You already have a big pleco. You're right, you're absolutely right. Am I going to keep that pleco in this 125 gallon tank? No, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually just going to go get that pleco. I'm gonna keep the pleco for about a day or two and then I'm going to give it away to a local pet shop and that way that local pet shop can find a good homeowner for that fish. Not sure why that lady didn't just do that, but I'll just do it for her and I'll make a video out of it, why not? Also, the tank is really dirty right now. When I come back, we are also going to clean this tank, or should I say, I'm going to clean this tank. The OGs of this channel, they know that I take care of my fish and they know how I clean my tank, but for the new subscribers out there, or for the new viewers, I should say, the ones that always just watch just to watch me but never click the subscribe button for whatever reason, I'm gonna show you guys how I clean my tank because a lot of you guys be talking smack down in the comment section about how dirty my tanks are. Truth is, I just film when I feel like filming. I don't ever prep. I don't, you know, go, oh, you know what? Before I start filming, I'm gonna clean the glass. Oh, before I start filming, I'm gonna do a water change. No, whatever my tank looks like at the moment, that's what you guys are going to see because I'm gonna keep it real for you guys. All right, let's go ahead and get the stuff ready to go pick up that big pleco. All right, guys, so here it is. I got this big styrofoam box right here. And I got just a little bit of water in there, like barely just enough just to cover the pleco. Now with plecos, plecos are some of the toughest fish out there. They could literally survive in like water that barely just covers their head. They just need water to barely just cover their head. I'm gonna show you guys a clip of my pleco doing just that. It's amazing how these guys can survive and such bad conditions these are plecas they are just tough as nails but let's go ahead and get started and be on our way and pick up our new fish for a few days all right guys i am back and i gotta say before i continue on with this video if you guys ever go on craigslist and try to meet up with people for any reason whether it be buying something or selling something always be safe always try to meet up in a public area you know because in 2018, there's too many crazies out there, okay? So make sure you have someone with you or that you meet in a public spot. Now that's out the way. This is what I got. But he's not as big as I thought he would be. But, I mean, he is too big for a 10-gallon tank, which is what he was in. So, fortunately, this guy is going to have a bigger tank now for the next two days until I take him to a local fish store and I give them away. And hopefully the local fish store will be able to find a better home for them because right now my 125 gallon tank is a little overstocked. So this guy, he's gonna be going in the 125 gallon tank but before he goes in, I gotta finish up my water changes. I'm doing a water change for the 75 gallon tank right now. It's a little cloudy. I was moving the gravel in here and getting all that nasty stuff from underneath there so that way that stuff doesn't build up and it harms my fish so water is down to where I need it to be which is about 50% which is always good alright guys so I am also draining out the 125 gallon tank it's a little dirty there's some allergy stains right here um, but that's not gonna be a big problem it's not gonna be an issue I'll be able to take care of it um, I just gotta wait till the water drains and uh, good thing I don't have too much substrate in here so I don't really have to do that much of a deep cleaning as I would in my other tanks. Um, the good thing about not having too much substrate is that the tanks are so much easier to clean. All you have to really worry about is the water, um, making sure that the water is good. Um, but I've been feeding these guys lots of krill 
and there's lots of nasty stuff in the sand here so I'm gonna go through it it's been about a week and I've been feeding these guys very heavily except for the peacock bass I've been trying to get him on the frozen foods he's it's not working though but uh, I'm gonna have to feed him live food again here pretty soon. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be feeding him some shiners. All right guys, so it is two days later after getting that Pleco and doing a water change for this 125 gallon tank. So you guys saw how dirty it was, how much nasty algae was on the glass. I finally got rid of it and here is the new Pleco that I just picked up from Craigslist. And honestly, I was gonna give them away. Actually, I still am gonna give them away to a local fish store. But I want to keep him for a few days just to see how he does. Right now, he's not at 100%. I don't feel like he's at 100%. Um, his fins right there, they kind of look damaged. And one unique thing that I noticed about this Pleco is that he loves to do this. He loves to just stand on the ground like this on his hind legs. I've never seen a Pleco do this. Have you guys seen a Pleco do this? Is this normal? I've never really kept big Plecos before. Um, these two plecos right here, that big one right there behind the bubbles and this one are the biggest plecos I've ever kept. But is this the same type of pleco as the bigger one that I have in here? Because I feel like they might be a little bit different because this one has a lot of white markings on it. Um, it's very vibrant. It's not like this one right here. I mean you can't really see him because he's hogging all the air bubbles. But this one definitely has more white markings than the other one. And in my opinion, I feel like he looks a lot better than the, the bigger Pleco. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's, he's swimming around, he's healthy, I'm pretty sure he's hard as a rock too. Uh, Plecos, they are just pretty much indestructible fish. So, but yeah, it looks like he's living a good life, you know, he's sucking up all the algae on the wall. He doesn't seem to have a care in the world. I think I did him a big favor getting him out of that 10 gallon tank and putting him here in the 125 gallon tank, but, you know, I'm having some issues with the big pleco right here. It's not a big, big issue, but it is, it is an issue to me. Um, sometimes at night, uh, the pleco he just gets startled for no reason, and he'll just start, just start running into the glass and just bumping into everything. And uh, sometimes my catfish and my bicher will get in the way, and he'll accidentally injure them. But you know, my catfish and bicher they're really tough fish, so they just rub it off. They're just you know tough it out, and you know they don't really care, but. You know, one day I feel like that Pleco is going to do some really bad damage and I don't want to go through that. You know, I love my babies, I love my fish, and I want what's best for them. So, let me know if you guys think I should get rid of these two Plecos. For sure, for sure. Because um, I really need help with that decision, guys. I mean, there's plenty of room in here. I mean, there's look at all that space over there. You know, there's plenty of room in here. They got, you know, air bubbles, filter. Um, I should add some more filter in here. I should add a hang on the back filter or I should add, you know, some sponge filters in here. But I think getting rid of that nasty substrate that I had in here definitely helped with everything. Um, this white sand is definitely making the tank look a whole lot better. But I wanted to show you guys something really quick that I think you guys will really enjoy. Okay guys, so this is my 20 gallon tank where I keep my snails and my two baby platies and I ended up keeping my prawn shrimp in here that pretty much lost all his limbs and his whiskers because the other prawn shrimp uh, decided to attack him after he molted in there and when a shrimp molts they are very soft for the first few days I believe and that makes them very vulnerable and their limbs get cut off very easily by by attackers but so I put him in here and he had no limbs, no whiskers, nothing. I don't even know how he was eating, but I'm gonna show that clip right now. So after seeing his limbs get cut off, you know, I feared for the worst. And you know, it took me a long time to grow this shrimp out to where he is now. So I don't wanna lose all that progress for nothing. So I decided to throw him in here. And I read online and some people actually commented on one of my videos saying that after they molt, they get their limbs back, but it's not going to grow as big as they used to be. So. Check this out, guys. Look at my prawn shrimp, y'all. Check him out. He got all his limbs back. He got his whiskers back. And he's doing good. It looks like he just molted maybe earlier today. And as you can see, he, he looks really soft. I'm pretty sure if I were to go in there and try to touch him, 
he would be really soft. They're supposed to be hard, um, but like I said, after they molt, they get really soft and they're really vulnerable to attacks. So that's why I threw him in here by himself, but I'm just so happy. I'm very happy that my prawn shrimp is going to get his life back pretty much, and he's going to be very beautiful. So I'm going to take very good care of this guy. I'm just going to leave him in here by himself. He can eat all the snails he wants. He can even eat these baby platies. I don't even care. My main priority in this tank is this guy right here. I'm not sure how I got this guy to molt so fast. All I know is that I just kept feeding him krill and a bunch of other things every day. I don't even know how he's, how he was eating that stuff. I'm just glad he made a recovery and I'm so happy y'all. All right guys, so this is the 29 gallon tank that has my tadpoles. Now this is by far the dirtiest tank that I have and I'm not proud of this tank, but you know, this is a totally different tank than all my other ones. So these are tadpoles that I got from the wild and I actually got them as eggs and I was able to hatch them out. If you guys missed that video, I'll leave a link here on the top right hand corner. Just click on that card. Now I have a question. So these guys have been with me since May and I haven't done a water change because I was told that these guys within two months they would turn into frogs. You know, if I just fed them properly. And as long as I had an air pump in here um, producing some surface agitation, I would be good. But, you know, this water is filthy, um, but a lot of the snails are thriving in here, as you can see. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of snails in here, which is awesome. Um, but these guys, they're not growing. I've been feeding them, but I feel like every time I put food in here, it's just dirtying up the water even more. So, if you guys want me to shout you out for the next video, please just leave some helpful tips down below in the comment section. I really want to know if I'm doing okay right now. I mean... The f tadpoles don't seem to be in any trouble or anything like that, but they're just not growing. They don't seem like they're at 100% with me. Except for the snails. The snails are definitely at 100%. Look at that little cluster right there of some small snails. I don't even know what kind of snails those are. But, yeah, I really need help with this tank. It's just absolutely dirty. Um, should I get rid of the water? Should I put new water in here? Or should I just leave it the way it is? Should I you know, lower the water level more and put some rocks in there. You know, what should I do? I've never raised tadpoles to frogs before. I've watched a few videos, but I'm still kind of confused as to what I should do. So if you guys can help me, I would really appreciate it. But for right now, let's go ahead and just feed them a piece of krill because I'm pretty sure they're hungry. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so here we go. I got some krill in here. Um, I cut it all up into small pieces so it's easier for them to eat. Let's go ahead and just pour it in there. So it usually takes them a few minutes until they realize there's actually food here. All right, guys, so I put the food in there. As you can see, there's krill everywhere. What's up, Blue? What you doing? Yeah, just not really happy overall with this tank. So if you guys can help me out, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, guys, so I also just wanted to update you guys really quick on my goldfish. So I still got my goldfish in here in this 20-gallon tank. Tank is a little dirty. I'll be doing a water change for them here later on in the week. But for right now, they're still doing good. Um, these are black panda goldfish I believe and they're just the cutest thing ever so I know you guys are like man you know you you only have like predator fish well I mean I, I do have these cute little goldfish and I love them to death and here's the little guy that I put in a bowl of Hennessy um, a lot of you guys weren't too happy about that I didn't really put him in alcohol but you guys didn't like it but he's still okay he's still here he's still eating um, what do they eat they eat this stuff right here uh, Bug Bites Goldfish Formula. They love this stuff. Um, I'm actually going to feed them right now. Um, even though I just fed them about a few hours ago, I'm pretty sure they'll eat again. I'm just going to put a little bit. But this stuff is great, especially if you have like finicky fish, you know, fish that are just struggling to eat. Um, Bug Bites, I use Bug Bites for all of my fish now. I used to use Tetracolor Flakes. That works too, but um, the difference between the two is that this one's a little bit more high quality in my opinion and in my experience the fish grow a lot better with this stuff So I'm gonna go ahead and just put just a little bit in here. Not too much There we go. Oh, wow. Okay. I put too much But check this out uh, The goldfish formula is perfect for goldfish because the pellets just sink to the floor um, So that way the goldfish don't have to go to the surface and uh, inhale air while they eat which is 
bad for the goldfish because that can cause issues with their swim bladder and stuff like that. And as you can see, they're all eating. They love this stuff and they can't get enough of it. They just keep eating that stuff. So if you guys want to order some, you guys can order some through Amazon. I'll leave a link down below in the description. I'll also leave a link in the comment section as well. Um, it's really great for your fish. Give it a try. I mean, I, there's tons of reviews on it on Amazon. You can see for yourself. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, my name is Master Aquatics, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, and peace out.